What is going on guys, Jin here from CZ Media. In today's episode, I finally have the FTRX7 race car back in the garage and I'm back at it, walking on it, and I'm gonna do an initial start or at least attempt to start the car for the first time on YouTube. The reason why I haven't been giving you guys updates and really I have stepped away from the build for close to a year now is simply because, as you saw in my live update video, I have stepped away from the car scene for a little bit to work on my small business. I've been spending a lot of time and I've also maxed out all my credit cards, personal and business. So I could not spend the money to build this car at all. Before I crank up the engine though, I want to give you a quick update on the latest parts that I've added on the car and kind of give you an uh, overview of how far it has come. All right, so here's my baby. But before I get to the engine, because there's a lot going on here, Let's just start with the outside of the car, right? I've started playing with the exterior of the car. I have test fitted the side skirt, which I'll go into more detail in future videos. But uh, I use quick opens to start kind of putting these over fenders on the car to see how everything fits. This is the origin kit. And this is the side skirt that I got delivered straight from Japan out of a container ship. So I don't really know what this side skirt is. If anybody knows what brand this is, please let me know. As for the wheels and tires, I am going to be running NKs, or should I say NK. More information on that to come in a future episode. Today we're gonna concentrate on starting this car. So let's pop the trunk here. Oh man, I love this quick latch system. Bam! It feels so good every time I pop that. Look how easy the trunk opens. So obviously I got the battery in the back that's being relocated. I'm going to be using this Taylor box. I got here my 500 shots of NOS. No, just kidding. This is a accu sump. What this basically does is it's got a valve inside. So if you're racing on the track, on the so-called track, right, time attack stuff, it's going to build pressure left and right and that's going to deliver additional oil into the engine so that you don't get oil starvation. I also have oil baffle pans and high pressure oil pump and all that stuff um, that I have already covered in this build. Over here I got my nice ricer teal colored uh, roll bar, roll cage, half cage should I say, that is uh, bolted in. Um, now this is not a setup I'm going to be running forever. This is just a temporary solution until I put in a full cage. I realized with the time I take to do my builds, putting in a full cage in this car would add like additional two years. So I didn't want to do that just yet. I want to get the car up and running and have fun with it. I want to maybe even crash it then put in that full roll cage afterward. All right now, going into the interior of the car. This is where I've been spending a lot of my time. As you can see, it is still a rat's nest because I'm still doing testing tune and uh, making sure everything flows correctly. Listen to this though. Now let's start with the dash here, okay? So I did the Flock It kit on the dash, which came out awesome. I ended up uh, painting the HVAC system, whatever this vent piece is, wrinkle black, which also came out awesome. Got my uh, shifter and uh, my custom shift knob with Prindle on it. Over here, I got the GM stock ECU. I believe this one was uh, Trans Am. Uh, obviously, I went through every single pin to make sure it is mounted correctly inside the engine bay to the actual LS engine. I also installed these heel plates from a company called Bubble Tech. Over here on the door, I got the LRB Speeds door delete kit. Looks awesome. I got this uh, authentic Porsche GT3 RS. Uh, door strap from eBay. eBay claims that this is authentic. There's no way this is authentic, but uh, it looks cool. It works. I'm happy with it. As for the door panels, I am so happy with the quality, the way it looks, and the fitment and everything. Super excited to run this on the streets and see how it sounds. On the B pillar, I also have LRB Speeds panel. And back here, I got the battery tray by LRB Speed, but because I'm running the battery tray in the trunk, I am using this as my little fuse box. So if you know RX-7s, you're all probably familiar with the fact that RX-7s have a lot of electrical issues and this is one of the reasons why it's got a lot of issues. There's like multiple fuse boxes. This is the one that came out of the engine bay on the right side and there's another relay system running in the bumper section. I'm not gonna go into detail about how crazy the wiring in this car is but I decided halfway into the project 
to just tear everything apart and redo it from scratch. So this is part of stock fuse box that I was going to just simply relocate it from inside the engine bay to back of the car but halfway into it i was like why am i even relocating this fuse box when i'm deleting half the stuff that's on here so what i ended up doing was creating this custom fuse box module looking thing i ended up adding a 150 amp circuit breaker here that connects directly into the battery box and this essentially works like a breaker for your house right whenever there's a short in the system it just kills the entire system and then you reset it by doing that this powers up two of my fuse boxes by bus Man. As you can see, there isn't much going on here in terms of numbers of relays. For example, I got one here for the fuel pump. Uh, I can't remember which one this is because I haven't labeled it yet. And because it's been so long and I have forgotten a lot of things, it is always a good practice to label every single cable that you're running like so. I've been very particular about labeling everything. Even these uh, ECU wires over here are labeled to make sure that if I run into any issues at the track, on the street, wherever I am at, or if I ever decide to sell this car, the next owner can know exactly which wire goes where and what does what. Over here, is just a bunch of schematics, man. I I have to brush up on my electrical engineering skills. The dash system there is gonna be swapped with the gauges from Speed Hut when I get to that. And also the kill switch is right now connected to ground because that was the easiest way to uh, get this car up and going. But I'm gonna be hooking this up into power kill switch with the alternator kill as well. So that's to be done in the future. Coming over to the side, I'm going to be selling the CCW two-piece, so if anybody's interested, let me know, 5 by 114 uh, I think it was 17 by 9 or 9.5 in width, running 275, 40, 17s right now. In the back is the Spirit R, um, RX-7 disc brakes. Now, I really had to go out of my way to find these rotors because these rotors for the back of the RX-7 are super rare to find and it's like, I, can't, I forgot how much I paid, but like $600 or something for the pair, stupid expensive. As for the front brakes, I'm gonna be running the six piston stop techs. Fits in there nicely. Now we're gonna talk about the engine that everybody hates, which I love. Now, I got the LS6 in here, aluminum block obviously, LS6 intake ls6 head ls6 block it's a genuine ls6 that has been completely rebuilt from scratch with my buddy pashko from Bezenek engine design thanks to pashko for dropping on the knowledge and helping me rebuild this engine because without him this engine would not be in the car right now and the motor is mounted in there with a sunburn kit as you can see the red down there cross member as well as the Sunberg radiator kit, which is kind of like a V-mount shape. I have here the power steering cooler that is mounted to the turn one power steering unit, which I run an AN line down to the stock steering rack. Now coming to the left side, I got Hot Water Lab Sleek Eyelid Kit. I love the pop-up headlights and the way they look on this car, I'm not gonna lie, but the fact is, it added additional power going into the whole pop-up headlight system. It required me to run additional relays, additional fuse, and additional wiring. Even though these lights worked without a problem, it is quite heavy. Now, it's not really heavy when you're building a street car or show car or just a fun little car around town. But when you're building a race car that you want to save as much weight as possible and keeping the front end as light as possible becomes pretty important. That is why I decided to remove the pop-up headlights. I wanted to keep it, but uh, I went back and forth and eventually just decided to get rid of it. Which is why I'm running this sleek headlight kit, which also looks pretty badass to me, honestly. And back to the car, so you know, you can see that a lot of dash in lines were custom made and ran. I also ran the dash in lines for the steam ports to connect all four points because a lot of times there's overheating issue in the head due to the steam not escaping out of the head. Now, some people say that's not a case, some people say it is, but I end up just connecting it all to make sure to be on the safe side because I will be driving this thing hard. Over here on the right side, I got this massive oil cooler from Hayden Automotive. I just basically welded this into the stock oil cooler mounting points. And for those of you who are not familiar with RX-7s, the, uh, the Spirit R version, I believe, came with oil cooler 
on the driver side as well as the passenger side because as you know rotary engines tend to run hot and that is one of the major failure causes of the rotary engines even though the ls engine is going to be running much cooler than the 13b engine with like a turbo system and the rotary engine in general tend to heat up i wanted to make sure i run a massive oil cooler to keep the engine temp down uh while going around the track i also forgot to mention this riser tow hook from ebay that i welded onto the car using the l bracket it is nice and stable and functional for when i'm gonna need this car towed which i'm sure will happen quite often now coming to the driver's side you can see right away that the aim lines these massive ones are going from the oil cooler to the cabin into the accu sump in the back that i showed you earlier you guys all saw me delete abs system by installing these uh custom lines right so all of that space is gone and cleared i bled the brake system the cut system and it's all good to go got the prop valve here for adjusting the brake bias front and back i also made a little note here as an indicator of how many turns i need to turn this for street use and track use this over here is a ugly looking yet functional fuel filter and fuel pressure regulator combo piece i'm gonna be relocating this to the back but i don't care about that so much now because i'm gonna be going with bigger injectors uh, i got fuel rare already from radium engineering this guy right here i'm gonna be installing this fuel rail in the car uh, all new fuel lines and new fuel pump in the back i'm also thinking of running fuel tank baffle system for fuel starvation prevention fuel starvation prevention i like that now as for the wiring of the car god i hate doing wiring as a mechanical engineer but uh, i basically went through like i said every single pin on this car labeled it as much as i can so i know which wire goes where uh for the sensors that's gonna be used to power up the custom gauge in the dash i have drilled a water temp sensor up in here because uh, i wasn't able to tap into the stock location down there in the head i have the oil pressure sensor up here on the back of the intake manifold which is a pain to get to and i got the oil temp sensor on the oil filter adapter sandwich plate whatever you want to call it itself and that is all integrated custom made into the oem engine harness that runs through the firewall down there which i need to find a cover for to make sure it's nice and protected but that about covers most of it so um the car has oil in it car has cooling in it the brakes are good to go clutch is good to go so now i'm going to show you what happens when i crank the car and oh my god i forgot how tight this seat is did i get fatter gotta make sure my automatic transmission is in neutral So guys, that's where I'm at and where I could use some of your help. The battery is fully charged. I have confirmed that the fuel injectors are getting fuel by removing the fuel rail and fuel injectors. It's good to go. It's getting spark. I checked every single spark plugs. Timing should be okay. Now, the only issue I can tell right away is that it's cranking too slow. I've replaced the starter, so it's got a brand new starter in it also. And it's got multiple grinding points. Let me show you that too. Mm, I smell exhaust. So it is definitely lighting up the gasoline that's in there, which is fresh. I have drained the fuel tank and put in fresh gasoline also. So I got multiple grinding points from the alternator to the chassis on this uh, driver's side. And I got another grinding point from the block there, as you can see, to the chassis and uh, i'm not running a ground on the head i think the stock ls engine has grounding point this is the grounding for the harness but i think stock ls engine has the grounding point connected from the firewall here to the head of the ls engine and i have another grounding point going directly from the ls engine to the battery because these cars are known for electrical issues and grounding point issues so this is a ground wire and this is the power wire and speaking of the power wire i'm thinking this might be one of the issues 
This power wire is a um, zero gauge wire that I bought from Amazon. Now the issue with this is that for the first time in my life, I decided to buy a CCA zero gauge wire, which is copper covered aluminum. So it's not pure copper cable, which I think might be causing this low cranking issue. Because again, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I'm assuming that this aluminum wire is not drawing enough current out of the battery to crank up the starter at the speed it needs to be cranked up. I've actually tried to jump start the car using the 5.7 liter Hemi engine, my DD, the Dodge Ram 1500, with the truck running and its battery pack connected directly to the battery pack of the FTRX7. So I'm starting to think that I need to replace this CCA cable with um pure copper and i'm gonna be hitting you guys up wire care if you're watching this because i know you guys provide zero gauge wire that is high quality so that is where i'm at with the build right now it is 99 percent complete it is so close to being finished and uh, well it's not finished but so close to starting for the first time so if any of you guys have tips or tricks or any suggestions on what to look for, what to fix, what to change, please let me know because right now my strategy is to change out the power wire. So that's it for today guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please smash that like button. Uh, there's way more footage just to come. Obviously, I gotta fit the bumper, the hood, the fenders, over fenders in the back. I got big wing, which is sitting up here. That's gonna be fitted to the car for that extra downforce. I gotta fit my new wheels, new tires. I gotta tune the thing. There's a lot more updates to come. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.